What's up guys, Tech James here. In this video, I will show you how to install the latest custom firmware onto your new Pocket Go. This video is for the new Pocket Go only, and we will be installing the Rogue custom firmware. All links to everything will be in the description of this video. Now this video will not cover ROMs and extra emulators. That is going to be in a separate part two video, and you will also need an extra SD card if you wish to get ROMs, unless you have Linux, because apparently there is a hidden partition on this SD card which is only accessible by Linux and that happens to contain the ROMs folders. But what you guys want to do for this video is you need your Pocket Go, you need one of the SD card adapters that will come in the box, this one actually came in the box of mine, and you also need the micro SD card which will come in the TF slot 1. So make sure you go ahead and disconnect the SD card. TF2 is for extra ROMs and emulators. TF1 is where your operating system is. Now I've only got TF1 as of now, so I'm going to disconnect this. And this is the one that we need to connect to my computer. So we're just going to get the adapter. We are going to go and connect it. So go and get your Pocket Goes SD card. This is the SD card that will be in slot one. So just go and get it and connect it to your computer. Now once you've connected this to your computer, it will bring up a load of Windows notifications. What we actually want to do is just click on cancel and okay. And we actually want to close all of these notifications down. Basically it's trying to format the SD card because it's got some unusual partitions on it that Windows doesn't recognize. Now the problem is one of these partitions is actually a Linux partition. And the worst thing is, this partition is the one which has all of our ROMs and emulator file folders on. And we're unable to see it because it is in the Linux format. Now Windows will try to format it, but make sure you don't because that will just destroy all of the files. The only partition we can actually see is this one right here. And as you guys can see, it doesn't really have much in. We can't see the ROMs or anything like that. And the Linux partition is completely hidden. Now I will make a video soon that will show you guys how to get more ROMs on your secondary SD card. Also emulator later files should work but for this video we're just going to focus on the rogue custom firmware so leave your windows file explorer and go to the links in the description of this video the first link that we want to go to is the windows 32 disk imager and we're just going to click on the green download button this software is what we're going to use to write the custom firmware image onto our sd card so just wait five seconds and this thing will download and end up in your downloads folder. So once this is finished, you can pretty much just cross this off and you guys want to go to the second link. Now the second link is the Pocket Go Rogue Custom Firmware. If we scroll down and click on releases, we will be able to get the main custom firmware file. Now the main file is the sdimage.bin. Now there's actually two files that you could use in here. There is also an OPK update file. In this video, I'm doing a fresh install, but if you guys want to update rather than delete everything, Thing. you could always install this one but we're going to go ahead and download the sdimage.bin so simply just click on this and wait for it to download so in your downloads folder you're going to find the two files that you recently got you're going to find your sdimage.bin and your windows 32 disk imager the first thing you want to do is double click windows 32 disk imager and go ahead and install it now i already have this installed it's very useful software and i don't need to install it again so i'm just going to leave that one but make sure you guys just go through the setup and get it installed the next thing you want to do is just click on your image and then click on the view tab at the top and click on the options logo. We then need to go into the view and make sure um, hide extensions for known file types is disabled. If you've got this ticked, we won't be able to edit it. So once it's ticked, I mean unticked, you want to right click, you want to go to properties and where it says bin, we're going to highlight it, delete it and put IMG. We're basically turning our bin file into our image file. So put image in, this is so it can be written onto the SD card click OK, click Yes, and then it will be updated. Now we need to sort out our SD card. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the search icon, and you guys want to type in hard disk, and that is because we're looking for the control panel program called Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. Click on this to go ahead and run it. Now this is a default program that is installed by Windows and once you open it, it's going to find the partitions on your SD card. Basically to make this simple, we're going to right click and we're just going to do delete volume, yes. We're going to do it to both of them just to completely wipe the SD card. So just wait for this one to delete, it might take a few seconds to until it's unallocated. And then we're going to do the same thing, right click, uh, delete volume and click on yes. So as you guys can see, it's now unallocated. We need to click on it, right click on it, new simple volume, next, 
Next again, uh, give it a letter if you want. I, you can pretty much choose anyone you want. Next again, FAT32, that all looks good. Next and finish. Now it's going to basically format it to FAT32 and we then need to format it again and then we should be able to install the custom firmware. So we're just gonna close off this. We can now close down this. We can go on this PC and we can actually find our SD card. Again, we're gonna right click it, format, we just need to go on capacity, file system FAT32, default allocation size, make sure quick format is ticked, give it a name if you want, maybe you can call it Pocket Go or something like that, or New Pocket Go might be a good name. There you go, New Pocket Go, we're going to click on Start, we're going to click on OK, and it's now going to format it. So now click on OK and close and it's now set up and we can basically install the custom firmware onto our SD card. So let's go back to our downloads folder. So back to the downloads folder, we need to open up Windows 32 Disk Imager. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on our search icon and we are going to find it. Just typing in Win32 should be okay and we're just going to click on the app to go and start it. We're then just going to click on yes and it will open straight away. Next, we need to make sure our device is selected. As you can see, mine is F and mine is F on here, so that's perfect. We're then going to click on the blue folder icon and we need to browse for our image file. Now, it's going to be somewhere in your downloads folder, so just go ahead and browse for it. Find it, click on it and click on open and now click on write. Um, then just click on yes. Keep in mind it's going to format it. If you guys have any ROMs or any emulator folders that you want backed up, make sure to drag and drop them somewhere on your computer, your OneDrive, your desktop. They're always good places to keep files you don't want to lose. So now we're just going to click on yes and it is going to format. For me, I'm not using Linux so I'm unable to find my ROMs but we're just going to wait for this to install. It shouldn't really take too long. Give it five minutes and if it takes longer than 10 minutes then there's something wrong. So maybe you should format again. But we're basically just going to wait for it to format and hopefully everything will go well and as you can see it's nearly done anyway. So when it's finished it's going to say write successful and it's probably going to remount itself like it did just there. So again cancel ok and um, cross cancel ok you guys get the idea. Click on ok where it says write successful and now just click on exit. Now if we go onto it we should be able to see that it's got some files on here. Now again the ROMs folder is actually hidden and that is quite a problem but as I said I'm not using Linux. So now what we can do is we can go and plug this into our Pocket Go and it's going to sort out the partitions for us. Okay guys so we are back let's go and plug in our SD card into the TF1 port and then we will basically be able to get this set up. So obviously while you're disconnecting the SD cards make sure your pocket go is turned off but once you plug it back in we can go and turn it on and it should actually begin sorting out the partitions. As you guys see we get a brand new custom um, kind of like boot screen. We've just got to wait a few seconds. Um, obviously this boot is a lot longer. The reason why this boot is longer is because it has to like shrink the partitions and stuff like that. You guys will see what I'm talking about in a second. So there you go, we get onto this section and it's basically going to sort out the SD card, check all of the data partitions and just do its thing. Um, it shouldn't really take too long, I'd say give it about 3 minutes. Um, this bit's probably the longest part um, where it makes the swap file for the first time. So just give it a bit of time and we will be back once it's done. Okay guys, so it's nearly done. If my camera will focus, it's about 99%, um, 100%, there you go, done. And now we're just going to wait for it to reboot. There you go, um, system rebooting in 10 seconds, and when it reboots, we should actually see the new operating system, and we can browse all the files and stuff like that. Then it's going to reboot, and now we can browse everything. As you guys can see, it's a bit different than the previous custom firmware. This one has a few different apps on and stuff like that. Um, applications has pretty much got all of this stuff settings and this is the settings I'm just gonna basically go for it we've got emulators as you guys can see it's missing quite a few emulators now we can add them so don't worry too much I have a new video coming out for that but yeah application settings and emulators you guys get the idea if you watch my last video you could have seen all the stuff it came with when you you know you buy it out of the box and this is what it looks like on the custom firmware now I think the sound might have been a bit improved there is probably a few improvements the only issue is is the emulators and the ROMs issue which will be a new video where I show you guys how to add them onto your backup SD card but that is pretty much it for this video if you guys enjoyed make sure to like and subscribe I will be making some more videos on the pocket go too thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one